I'm sorry, I have a question. Do you know how to put an electronic autofocuser on an FRA scope? No? Then actually we have something in common. I also don't know it. And actually I already put an electronic autofocuser on my CPC-800 and I felt it was at this time much easier because first of all there was a separate kit required that fit directly to the Celis drone SCT scopes and on the other side there were actually YouTube videos like the one I'm doing now, describing how to do it. Now in this case, there's no separate kit sold, so I have to assume everything I need is in this box. And on the other side, I couldn't find any YouTube videos, so that seems to be a first. So please join me in my adventure of getting the thing installed. And at the end, we will both be at a different place because we both will know how that it's actually done. See you right after the trailer. So here we are, on the floor, and you might ask, why on the floor? A wise man once said, what is already on the floor cannot fall to the floor. And in case of a telescope, I find this an absolute advantage. So with my clumsiness, better do it right here, rock bottom. So let's first up open this box and see what's inside and let's see if everything is in there what we actually need. So there's the manual, there's the main block, there's the cable. We need that when we were actually successful. There's some Allen keys. It's not that I wouldn't have already have them, but let's always start with a fresh, clean pair. It's just this little bit of luxury we all deserve, right? Okay, then that's definitely a part I'm going to need. We have some screws. And we have actually four different parts. So one of them must fit, right? So I started here with the Chinese part which shocked me a little bit, but then I figured out there's actually on the other side also an English part. Great. So what it actually says is I first have to get rid of the focuser knob. Then I have to connect the motor with the right connector, whatever it is. And then only once I have done that, then I know where actually it really has to fit. So let's try that. So from the last cut, about 15 minutes got by. The issue was that this screw here was so hard that I could not really loosen it. And I didn't want it to apply too much force, so I tried different things, but at the end, brute force. I really had to exert so much force until it kind of gave a popping noise. And now I can actually unscrew it. So, and yes, it gets also loose, so that's good. And I get it off. So I think that's probably, I hope that was the biggest challenge. So now with that unscrewed, we have here now the axis. And now it's probably guessing, I assume, which one works. So this here seems to be the same. So let's just put them all nicely sorted. So let's start with the smallest one, right? Which definitely do not, does not work on the side. Same here, definitely not. That works, that works. So now when we trust what you're saying, we're installing it first here. And from my experience with the CPC, it's quite worth it to really strongly tighten the screws. Because if you don't do it, after some time, they get loose. And then the whole thing rotates. And you don't know why it's not focusing. It might be easier here to see because the other side will still rotate. 
but with the CPC it drove me crazy. So that's tight. Now comes the motor. Now that comes to the other side. It slides right in. So now we know this slides in here. And these two, they come here. So it's like this here, somehow. So with that, we can now actually figure the distance here and then screw the whole thing together. For that we have nice screws here. And let's hope they work. Okay. So let's first see which ones we need for here. So one and two, we fix it a little bit, but so that it still has um, room to travel. Now I attach it in here. Now let's see. So they say here that, that I can use hole one, three and five. So I will use hole three and five. Okay. And so after I tighten now all the screws, this is how it looks like. So it's connected down here to the base. It's connected here to the EAF. It's connected through this adapter from EF to the focuser. And so that looks okay. So I think the secret is, first of all, to dare to have enough force to get the screw open, then to find the right adapter of the four, and the rest was actually easy peasy. But when we talk about easy peasy, the question is, does it work? And so that's what we will see now. So I have here a cable that's connected to my mini computer. So let's now for the first time connect it and let's go to the PC. So we're here now in the ASI imaging suite. I just, I got here in the settings, electronic auto focuser, and it actually shows up here. So when I click now turn on, it appears. And so now let's see what happens when I press here. The wheel turns and that's a good sign. So approved. So if everything would be as easy as that, astrophotography would be quite an easy hobby. As we all know, it isn't. And another positive thing is this is something you can do in your basement, even when there's clouds in the skies. I still haven't shot a decent pic with this scope, given that we have constant clouds, but I can extend it, right? <laughs> and prepare myself for the moment when we have clear sky again. And when I talk about clear sky, see you next time and clear skies.